Shalom, Ahab, Ba, Barak. First and foremost, Kahalayama, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rabbah Kadash. Double honors to all the elders, prophets, and apostles that are bringing out the sincere 100% truth. I'm going to get right into it today. I just have a class, just so happens to be about the prophets. In fact, if you have a prophet that is giving out lies or, um, how would you say it, compromising the truth, that is no prophet. That is a liar. The truth is given unto the prophets. Okay? Let's go ahead and um, start with... Um, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So um, we're going to go straight to um, John 8 and 32. So John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What that say, What that saying is, is um, see, mentally and spiritually, at this point, they have us broke down to nothing. But every time we get a little, another little piece of our um, culture back or a piece of our history back, it frees our minds a little bit. It, it, it makes us more confident in who we are because we were told that we're scum of the earth since the day I was born. I know that's how they treated me. So let's just get right into it. We're gonna go into, um, I just wanted to show you that I come out here to bring truth, sincerely. I don't want nobody's money. I don't want, I don't care about views. I don't care about comments. I don't care whether you like me or not. I come here to bring the truth. If I get one single person out of this whole earth that's sincere in the truth, I'd rather that one person than a thousand people that aren't sincere, but are following instructions and just going through the motions. Let's go ahead and get into it though. First Corinthians chapter 15, oh, sorry. First Corinthians chapter 15, KJV blue letter. And we're gonna, um, I'm going to start at verse 1, but then we're going to just jump all the way down to the actual point. But I really love the first verse of this chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting from the top. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. So he preached the gospel to his brothers, and they received it right where they stand. So let's jump up to verse 50. There's a lot of meat in here. But um, I want to get right to uh, what I was going to... I'm trying to stay with a certain point. So I'm going to start at uh, verse 50 is what we're going to do now. Jumping down, we read verse 1. Now we're going to jump down to verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. So... You're not going to be a corrupt person and then <laughs> inherit the kingdom while being corrupt your whole life. It's impossible. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So that goes right into woke, sponsored by Pepsi, woke by Nike. Woke. You know why they took the word woke and changed it like, like that? Because to be asleep means to not understand this doctrine. But to be woke means that you understand the Most High gave you a gift. 
what I have said before, a superpower. You have a superpower. You are one of the chosen elect to understand this book. So we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So the dead are what they're talking about, are the people that are asleep. Raised incorruptible, when they wake up, they're going to wake up in the law the statutes, the commandments, the ordinances. Let's keep going, though. Let's read a couple more. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. Okay? You've heard the prophets say that we're going to be changed and we're not going to be like regular humans anymore. There it is. 1 Corinthians 15 and 53. Let's keep going. Let's read um, one more. So when this corruptible shall be put on incorruptible, this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So the corrupt shall put on incorruption. So you sinners are going to stop sinning. We're all going to be changed. Whether you have to die a horrific death and be born into the kingdom changed, or you are the chosen one-third elect and you change now. Let's keep on going, though. I'm just, I'm just jumping around through some notes, but that's what I like to do. Let's go over to um, 1 Peter. So, first of all, you know you have to be made incorruptible. And this is all leading somewhere, too. You have, if you're corruptible, you're a sinner. So you're made incorruptible means that, that you're, you're being removed from your sins, your um, fleshly, carnal lifestyle. Let's go ahead and get uh, back over to, uh, what did I say, First Peter. And we're going to go to chapter 1. And... Chapter, we're going to read um, Let's go to, let's start at 21 Since we're talking about being woke and being dead in the spirit Let's start at verse 21 Who by him do believe in Yahweh That raised him up from the dead And gave him glory That your faith be hope might that your faith and hope might be in Yahweh, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit into unrefined love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not corruptible let, let me say it again I messed up being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of Yahweh which liveth and abideth forever so you have to be born again of incorruptible seed. In other words, you have to you have to come back to the laws. And I can show you that. Anyway, let's just stay on this. Let's stay on this. You have to be you have to be born again incorruptible. You have to come back to the laws, and in your spirit, you have to be born again. So if you're a born again Christian or whatever, in your spirit. To be born again means that you've put off the corruptible lifestyle that you are living. And now you are pursuing an incorruptible lifestyle by applying the scripture to your daily life. You learn something new. Oh, I can do this. This I didn't even know that this was one of the laws. I, I could definitely apply that to it. incorruptible. Let me keep going. 
Let's jump into it. Let's go to the book of Amos. Because now that we've got an incorruptible spirit, we've... Um, we um, Now that we have an incorruptible spirit, the Most High is ready to deal with us. Amos, chapter 3. We're going to know it. Now, if you're, a, if you're one of the... Um, Prophets, you're gonna um, know exactly where I'm going. Maybe not, but we're gonna start at definitely six. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? And shall there be evil in a city and Yahweh hath not done it? So why would the trumpet be blown in the city and the people be afraid? Let me let me just show you that really quick. That's why I wanted to get that verse first. Let's get a precept on it. Um, Exodus 20 and 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. That trumpet is blown to gather the people together during the time of Moses when the Most High was giving them the instructions. Let's get another one. Uh, Exodus 19 and 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. So this trumpet, it, it, it was a scary thing for them. They were being called by Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. To, uh, and then I would have to, I can't remember where that's at, where the, the trumpet is actually, um, it's how they grow, how they call the people together also, and how they um, would you blow the horn for war, you would blow the horn to gather the people, and when the Most High, when Moses' horn was blowing, um, the people were scared because they knew, they knew that they were sinners. I think, um, I think I found it. Um, I think I found it. Here it is. That's Joshua chapter 65. I said, you know, that horn was used to gather the people or to call war. So I'm going to show you. Um, Joshua 6 and 5. And it came to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shout with a great shout. And when, and that's just talking about Jericho, of course. So then the horn was an instruction to do something. Okay, it's time when we blow the horn, it's time for you to do certain things. And that's not even the one I wanted to find, but that'll do. So let me just read it again. And it came to pass when they made a long blast of the ram's horn, and ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up, every man straight before him. So, like I was saying, the trumpet was also used um, to, like like I said, this would clearly be for a time of war. He blows the trumpet, they all scream and shout, the whole city crawls. Um, let's get away from that now. Let's go back to um, Amos. So, shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Now in Jericho, they heard that trumpet, the whole city crawled. So those people were definitely afraid. When Moses was, um, um, when Moses was getting ready to speak to the people, the most high people in trouble, they were scared. They weren't afraid. They were scared. They were trembling. But let me keep going. Um, Shall a trouble be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and Yahweh hath not done it? 
Look at what's going on right now. We know that we're ushering in the end. We're at those last days. You see evil in the city. I'm showing you where it came from. The most high Yahweh should Yahweh shot. Let these things happen. Why? Because we're wicked. We're a wicked community. We're a wicked. We're a wicked city. We're a wicked town. We're a wicked state. We're a wicked country. The whole earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. That's why. So, let's go down to the next one. Surely, Yahweh will do nothing, but he'll reveal his secrets. He reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So, you've been, you were corruptible, you've been made incorruptible you you're you're now following in the spirit you're um you're you're applying what you've learned to your life so now the most high is dealing with you and how do you know he's dealing with you surely yahweh will do nothing but he reveals his secrets unto his servants the prophets so when you start doing his works He'll start revealing secrets unto the chosen elect. Just because you're an Israelite doesn't mean you're part of the chosen elect. And sometimes it might mean the exact opposite, that you're part of the two-thirds. you got to remember, more people are not going to get into the kingdom than are going to get into the kingdom. Let me keep going. Let's jump over to... Um... um Revelation. We're going to go to chapter 22. Um, let's see what we got here. So let's go ahead and start at verse 6. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And Yahweh, Lord Yahweh, of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. So what if the, the angels came down and he's giving instruction? Behold, this is verse 7. I come quickly. Revelation 22 and 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Blessed is he that does, what did I say? This book is application. You've got to apply to your life what you're learning. You don't just hear it in one ear, out of the damn Israelite, and then... Go back to a carnal, worldly life of doing nothing for Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. When you read, you have to, to, to be able to understand it, you have to accept everything in this book. See, a lot of people get offended as soon as they hear that they can't do certain things, and I think I'm going to bring that out right now. Because you have to accept everything. The good and the bad, because it's all a perfect balance. So what happens is, is the people that don't study, what they do is they heard a verse. And so they'll go to that verse out of context. We call it cherry picking. They heard something, you said something over here, so oh, I'm gonna confound you with this verse that I heard some Christian saying. And they'll come, off the, they'll, they'll come off the side of their neck with some verse out of the New Testament that they don't understand. So you can't be a cherry picker. You can't come around cherry picking verses out of context. We have to eat the book. What do we have to do? We have to eat the book. Like I said, everything. Good, bad, happy, sad, death, life, the curses, the blessings, it's all there. We have to eat the whole book. Let's get that. Revelation chapter 10, 
Man, we're gonna go right down to verse and I'm gonna start at verse seven. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, so in, in the in the day when the seventh angel comes, this is a, a prophecy. In the days, days, so this is in the future, of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound. The mystery of Yahweh should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Let me keep going. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel. And said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. So, what it's saying here is the angel came down. He gave him instructions to learn this book that he made, that he needs to understand it. He needs to read it. He needs to take it in. He needs to understand the book, ingest it, comprehend it. Okay? Um, it's going to be bitter. When it hits thy belly, it's going to be bitter. But when it's in your mouth, it's going to be sweet as honey. This is where I want to get that precept right now. Um, I think it's in Mark. It's in Mark and Matthew, I'm just not finding it. Let me just find it real quick. Uh, hold on. I just have to do it the old fashioned way. I gotta ask. And the riches of this world choke the word. What chapter is this? Yeah, four. I knew it. It was in Mark. I was right there. Okay, all right. That's enough. Late. That's what they do. All right. Mark, chapter four. I had it. I was just like, you get too excited sometimes with something. Mark, chapter four, KJV, blue letter. And we're going to go down to verse, like I said, I thought it was in 13. I was in, oh, I was in chapter 6. I was, like, I was in chapter 6. I went to Mark chapter 6, chapter 4. And we're going to start at um, we're just going to have to read the whole parable. I'm sorry. That's all, we, that's all there is to it. So, let's start at um, verse Mark 4 and 14. The sower soweth the word. The prophet teaches the word. The sower is the prophet. Sowing is teaching. And the word is the scriptures in this book. And these are they by the wayside where... The word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So, what is, what is, um, so what happens is, you gotta listen to this carefully. The prophet teaches the word, and when the people hear it, Satan hears it. He comes running over and immediately confuses the doctrine. 
Because the word that is sown in your heart, it's your mind. So Satan immediately came and what you were hearing and you were starting to understand your minds, he comes in and he confuses it immediately. And he takes away the, the teachings that they were putting in your head. So they didn't want you filling your head with all of that crazy nonsense. That's how the elites of today act. And they are Satan. That's why if you say anything that they don't like, we have the First Amendment, right? We're freedom of speech. Yet, if a so-called black man calls himself a Jew, we, we lose those rights immediately. So, let me go back into it though. So these are the ones that have the, where the word is sown by, the, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their hearts. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, and who they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. So these people are on stony ground, they have no root, is what I'm saying. They, they, they are excited about the word and have no root in themselves, so endure but for a time afterwards when affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So when they realize that, that they're going to be afflicted or persecuted for the sake of Yahweh Shemel Shai, they get angry. Oh man, we, I'm just supposed to go out and get hurt? I'm supposed to risk my life and my freedom? For this, yes, yes you are. Let me keep going. These are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So, did you hear that? My son is 10 years old, and he said, when you say the thorns, Dad, that's the Edomites. And I was like, really, son? Well, let's read, and let's change that word, and see if my 10-year-old uh, son is right. And these are they which are sown among the Edomites such as hear the word, but then the cares of the world, the Edomite world, the worldliness of their world, and the deceitfulness of riches. Who, where do you get your riches from? Where do you get your money from? The, you, their faces are on every dollar, you, and they make the whole world use their dollar as the number one currency, right? Where do we get that from? Who is that? Isn't that an Edomite? So, it's very interesting. And these are they which are sown among the Edomites, which hear the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. So just like, and you know what? I love my, uh, I love that my son said that. He was 10 years old and said, those thorns are the Edomites. And when you look at it, the Edomites control everything that makes you um, enticed or lustful. All you do is turn on the TV, they own every station. All their propaganda is set towards you. The riches you get is by doing the stuff that they want. And in fact, let's see. Nick Cannon, Kodak Black, Kyrie Irving, um, Kendrick Lamar, um, uh, um, uh, clearly Kanye. So watch this. All those people did the same thing. They said that they were the real Jews. And then Satan came in immediately and took away the word that was sown in their hearts. How do I know? Because the cares of the world and the deceitfulness, the lies 
of the all that money that they had, they didn't want to lose that rich. They don't want to lose their riches. They didn't want to not be able to go and lust after and get any type of lust or other things entering in to fulfill their nasty desires. You see what I'm saying? So they're immediately, they're offended. They become as unfruitful. So how, how are they gonna be anything? Just think about it, think about it again. Let's think about this one more time. They have no root in themselves. So they endure but for a time, but afterwards when the affliction and persecution arises for the world's sake, immediately they are offended. You jump down to 19, and these are the ones, well, 18, they're sown among the thorns, like my son said, the Edomites, and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches, the lust entering into the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And of course, we gotta get four and 20, because this is us, the prophets, the elders, the apostles, the teachers, the disciples, the sincere Akiyam and Akwa coming into the 100% truth. 420, Mark 420 is for us. And these are they which are sown on good ground, which hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30 fold, some 60, and some 100 fold. So the point is, is when we go back to uh, Revelation, when we were in 22, it says that you have to accept everything, good and bad, because it's a perfect balance. You can't cherry pick what part of the Bible that you want to follow. When I told you in Revelation 10 and 9 right now, I said you have to eat the whole book. And then, you what, what does that mean? You have to read this book and understand it. Let's, let's go over to the book of Ezekiel now. Let's be done with uh, that for a second. Let's jump over to Ezekiel chapter 3. Precept to Revelation 10 and 9. The angel came down, he instructed uh, John to eat the book. So let's see what happens over here in Ezekiel. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So learn this book and then go teach it to the children of Israel. Only the truth is given unto the prophets. You'll know right away if you're a prophet or not when you try to break these scriptures down and people start cutting you up like confetti. So, moreover, he said unto, son, he said unto me, Son of man, eat, thou, eat that thou findest, Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. Verse 2. So I opened my mouth and it caused me to eat the roll. So he taught him. He, he, he read the book. He learned it. He understood it. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. It was in my mouth as sweet as as. It was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Okay? So, the word is, it, it sounds great. But the bitterness is when, like I told you, the cares of the world rise up and they choke the word right out. You got to be very, very careful. So let's read it again. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll, and give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. So he caused his belly to eat, and he filled his bowels with this roll. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Verse 4, And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak my words unto them. Okay? I'm going to move on. I'm going to jump over. And our words are this book. We're, we're, we're instructed to teach the children of Israel to come back to the laws, statutes, and commandments. Sincerely. That's not how you're getting in the kingdom. The only sincere ones will be able to keep the laws with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Everybody else will just go through the motions and they're going to be wondering at the end, I did everything you said, I prophesied your name, I did this. And you say, I did not know you. Don't you understand, people? This book isn't for everybody. And there's two thirds of you out there that have already been choked out and you're about to be done away with. Have you not seen how the Most High doesn't like rap music? He, they, they got the word choked out of them and then he did away with them, didn't he? He translated them, right? They're back in the kingdom now at rest. They went to judgment. Let me keep going. Let's go to the book of uh, Jeremiah. Chapter 15. I would be out on the streets today, but it's been raining ever since I woke up. So Jeremiah chapter 15 and 16. Thy words were found. He understood them. And you don't believe me? Let's go to the Strong's. Thy words were found. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see if that the words that he found that he that it meant he understood. Let's see. To find out. To find, to find, to secure, to acquire, to get things sought, to find what is lost, to meet, to encounter, to find a condition, to learn a device, to find out, to find, to detect, to guess, to come upon, light upon, to happen to, meet, fall in with, to fall in with, I really like that one. How do you guys feel about that one? To fall in with. Let me just keep going. I'll, I'll, I'll just... Um, let me just keep going. To come upon, light, light upon, um, to fall in with, to hit, to be fall, to be found, to encounter, to be lit light upon, to be discovered, to appear, to be recognized, to be discovered, to be detected, to be gained, to be secured, ooh, to be secured, to be in the position of, to be found in a place, happen to be, a, to be left afar, after, to be left after war, to be present, to prove to be, to be found sufficient, to be enough, to cause to find, to attain, to cause to light upon, to come, to come upon, to come, to cause, to encounter, to present, offer. So, I'm just showing you. The words were understood, and he did eat them. So he under he he, he took it in and he understood. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Remember, the word was sweet like honey on his lips. So when he heard the word in his mind, he loved it. And who wouldn't that wasn't um, part of the chosen elect? When you hear this for the first time, your whole body lights up. You get goosebumps from your neck to your feet, all up and down your back. And only thing you can do is say, I want more. I need more of this food. I want to eat more of this. So, Jeremiah 15 and... Um, 16 again. Thy words are found, and I did eat them, 
that thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, Yahweh of hosts. For I am called by thy name. So, eat the book, eat the roll, learn the book, learn the scriptures, learn how to do the breakdowns, and you'll know right away whether you're part of the chosen elect. Let me just jump around a little bit more. Book of Sirach, chapter 42. Oh my gosh, really? You would, you would expect them after saying KJV every single time for years now that they would let me have that. But no, 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 not at all. So let's go to Sirach chapter, um, make sure they're got me in the right book too, because I'll do that. 42, and we're gonna go down to verse, He seeketh out deep and the heart and considereth their crafty devices. For Yahweh knoweth all that may be known, and he beholdeth all the signs of the world. 19. He declareth the things that are past and for to come. He revealeth the steps of the hidden things. So he's revealing the steps of his hidden things, right? Watch this. Let's go right back to it. Book of Amos chapter 3, KJV Blue Letter. Book of Amos chapter 3, KJV Blue Letter. Surely Yahweh will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Okay? So now let's go back to it. Sirach chapter 42, KJV. Read it again. Verse 19. He declareth the things that are past, and for to come, he revealeth his steps of hidden things. So I just showed you the only way you're going to be able to get those hidden things is through the prophets. The truth is given unto the prophets. So when he's revealing these things, he's revealing them to his, his chosen elect. And then from us, it goes out to the rest of the um, hopeful elect. So let's go over to Sirach chapter 3. Take it. According to Wikipedia, Because uh, 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 they'll, they'll, they won't put it, they'll give me every, they'll give two pages of different Bibles before you can find. Sometimes they won't even put KJV in it, which I just don't understand. It's like the most important Bible written for our people, for our time frame. So. Let's go to Sirach chapter 3, and we're going to take it to a uh, verse. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to start at 17. My son. Um, um, um. Go on with thy business in meekness, so shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. The most high is going to love him. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself. So the, the better, the, the greater you are, the more you should be, you should humble yourself 
the more the, the higher he built you, the more humble you should be. And thou shalt find favor before you howl. So if you humble yourself when he makes you a great person instead of letting everybody know how great you are. If you humble yourself instead, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. So all you people that are in high places and everybody wants to listen to you because you make a bunch of money. Hold on. Let me get this one. Degree. Sorry, commercials. Hate those commercials. But, like I said, you know what? Let's get the definition for meek. I think you guys are going to like this because Moses um, uh, was uh, meek beyond all men. So let's get that first. Let's get that first. Hold on. Moses was meek above all men. What chapter and verse? Numbers, Exodus, Numbers. Let's go to um, let's go to Numbers. Numbers chapter twelve and verse three. Now the man Moses was very meek above all men which were upon the face of the earth. I don't like the blue letter breakdown of the word meek, because I'm gonna show you why. It makes it soft, gentle, and just, no, watch this, because wasn't Moses the same guy that chopped off somebody's head? So I need you guys to understand that here's the definition of meek. What is the biblical definition of meek? No. This is essentially an attitude or quality of heart whereby a person... All right, I don't want to hear it. I'll read it. Meekness is essentially an attitude or quality of heart whereby a person willing to accept or submit without resistance to the will and desire of someone else. In the case of Israel, it would be Yahweh. So Moses was meek above all men. He would submit to Yahweh without resistance to the will and desire of what he wanted. So he did what the Most High told him without resistance. That's what it means to be meek. So, the meek shall inherit. Let's go back to it. Sarah chapter 3 and verse 19. Ah, once again. I cannot believe I have to do this every time. So, many are in high place of renown, but the mysteries are revealed unto the meek. Okay, and so we already know that the meek are, uh, it's a person willing to accept and submit without resistance to the will and desire of, we're going to say, the how. So let's keep going. Let's jump back over to, so, so. The mysteries are going to be revealed to the meek and the elect of the house of Israel. Because the elect of the house of Israel are going to be the ones that are meek. Because they're going to be the ones that hear this word and willing to bring it out with 100% truth sincerely. See, they're not being... So what's the resistance? It says submit without... What is the resistance? Well, see, the world comes in and they offer you anything that you want to take your mind and your heart away from the truth. And he showed him the whole world in an instant. What chapter and verse?
Satan showed Jesus the whole world in an instant. What chapter and verse? There it is. Um, I know the chat. I know the scriptures, but um, um, sometimes I don't know where they're at. So. So, um, let's start at um, 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 verse 8. This is Matthew chapter 4 and 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So, the mysteries are revealed to the meek, right? So let's go back one more time. So, Satan, remember, at, oh, watch, let me show you, because this is the resistance that we were talking about. Remember, the meek will not, um, will not be, res they won't resist. Anyway, let's go to it. So I don't say it wrong. Uh, yeah, here we go. They will submit without resistance to the will and desire of Yahweh. So, submit without resistance. The resistance was when Satan came in immediately, offered him the world, and all he would have to do is bow down and worship him. So, in this day and age, the um, uh, the if you do what the hands of evil tell you to, which are the Edomites, the elites, the top tribe being the Jewish people. If you do what they say, they'll take care of you. I will give you all that's under the sun. Just bow down and worship them. How do you worship them? By signing into their contracts and doing what they say. So when they give you a million dollars, that ain't your million dollars. You haven't paid for that million dollars. You haven't made them a million. That's their money. That's why they control these people. They give them more than they're worth and then they take control over them. And since they have an influence on the, the, um, on the, pop, on the population, they uh, pay them to do exactly what they say. So that's the resistance. So anybody that is, so a person is willing to accept and submit without falling into that trap of Satan giving them the world to bow down and worship him. So secretly, you'll have these prophets out here, but they're really in bed with Satan, getting paid by Satan. 501c3 is of the devil. The 501c3 is of the devil. I don't care if you got a million people in your camp. I don't care if you got 100,000 camps or 100,000 people, or 125,000. If your camp has 125,000 people in it, then there should be at least 100,000 classes going out every day. There's 25,000 people that are still studying to get to, the, to being able to bring out classes. I think. think about that, maybe just once a week. Once a week, 100,000 classes a week. So it's not a numbers game. It's about that one person who's willing to accept and submit without resistance. So Satan will do anything under the sun to get you to resist Yahweh. That's why I keep telling you this truth, it's only given unto the prophets. We're gonna be the only ones that you're gonna be able to get uh, actual guidance from. Let's keep going. I got a few more verses and I'm gonna uh, close it out, but um, Let's go to um, I'm gonna I, let me look at it first.
course, of course, of course. That's right, okay, so. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save this one, I'm gonna come back to it. I wanna use that precept and I wanna use it right here. Let's go to the book of, um, I'm definitely, I definitely wanna bring that. I've been looking for that precept too. Um, um, let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter three, KJV blue letter. All right, let's get it. Let's go down to where I want to get the point. Um, Ephesians 3, starting at the top. For this cause I, Paul, a prisoner of Yahawashiah, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of Yahweh, which is given to me, you were. So let's see what this dispensation means. Let's hear it. Ikanamia. 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 And what does it mean? The management of a household, specifically the management, oversight, administration of others' property. So, if you have heard of the management of the household, of the grace of Yahweh, which is given me to you, word, how that by Revelation, he made known unto me the mysteries as I wrote before in few words. So, Paul, being a prophet, was given the mysteries. And we can go back to, um, 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 Amos 3 and 7 again the, the, the let's just get it here. Amos chapter 3 and 7 surely Yahweh will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants the prophets so if you have heard of the Dispensation of grace of Yahweh, which is given to me, you were. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. What did he do? He made known unto Paul the mystery. Surely Yahweh will do nothing but the but he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So he revealed his mystery. He he showed. He made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four and few words. Let's keep going. Let's go over to, um, so the mysteries are revealed to a small select few. That's why you'll have a prophet, a reader, and a couple other guys, and they're in the truth. They're on one accord. But everybody else around him is just trying to stop the word. They have all these questions. Well, why can't I save the white man? Why can't I save the Ethiopian? Hey, I thought Ethiopians were Israelites. No, they're from him. So there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are against us from the jump. Very few of us are gonna understand this word. And then many will be called, but only very few of us will be chosen. Let's go to the um, book of Matthew. Chapter uh, 11. And we're going to go down to the point. It's in verse. Um, 
Matthew 11 and 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So he's saying, look, of all things are delivered unto me of the Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. <laughs> Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. So that, that you don't know him or his dad, and you don't know his dad or him. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal us him. So the only people that are going to have a revelation, a revealing, are the ones that the Son chose. And to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So, like I said, there's only a very few select people that are even going to get this. Let me say it again. The truth is given unto the prophets. The truth is given unto the prophets. Let me, um... Let me go to 1 Timothy. I'm still waiting. I want to bring out that preset. And I thought I had a spot to put it in. Uh, 1 Timothy. We'll go to chapter 4. And we'll start from... Um, start from the top. Now, the Spirit speak, speaketh expressly that in the latter times... Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. And speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And so, um, that, um, these days, like I showed you, um, In Matthew with Yahweh Shai, when Satan came down in an instant and showed him showed him the whole world in an instant when he took him to a high mountain top and told him, if you bow down to me, I'll give you everything. So let's read it again. Now there are now the spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. And Satan cometh immediately when the word comes out, right? And he taketh away the word that was sown in your heart. And what does he replace it with? Doctrines of devils. So, um, just remember this, Israel. If it were at all possible, they would fool the very elect. Matthew 24 and 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Let's go back over to uh, 1 Timothy now. 1 Timothy 4, KJV. And now let's, let's read it again. Now the Spirit speak expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So um, you depart from the faith. The perfect example, I hate to use Nathaniel as an example, because he's like one of the... Um, most famous people in Israel, I would say, when it comes to Israelites. But when he got that, he went from teaching Yahweh about Hashem Yahweh Shai, and then he got a 501c3. Then he became Most High Christ Plus. How can you? I'm not even going to go into it. It's a hypocrisy. It's a lie. And they're going to have their conscience seared with a hot iron. <laughs> but. 
it, it, it's it's interesting how the scriptures speak on how things are going to play out and 90 percent of the people will sit there with this truth right in their face and go straight to denial and, and i honestly i love some of the um classes from uh iuic from the past before they got the 501c3 but um i i can i can literally pinpoint where they start going off not because I'm that great, it's because I study that much and I take that many notes. I'm not great at all. In fact, I'm a liar unless I'm coming from these scriptures. I can't come to you unless I come through the oracles of Yahweh, Baha, Hashem, Yahweh, Shah. Other than that, I'm lying to you. So, before I um, shut this down, I got... Um, Second Timothy 2, KJV Blue Letter. I got two more verses and I'm going to shut it down. This is Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to start at... Start at 15. I just was telling you, all I do is take notes and study. Let study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of the of truth. I was about to say 100 percent truth, but it's rightly dividing the word of truth. Be but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Because those profane and vain babblings are confusion to the truth. I got one more, and then I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. Let's see, what do we got here? We got one more. I'm hoping it's the best one. I just got to check it first. Yep. Isaiah 62 and 6. We're going to close out here. I have set watchmen upon the walls, O Yerushalayim, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Yet, I mean, ye that make mention of Yahweh, keep not silent. In fact, let me read one more. And give him no rest until he establish and until he make Yerushalayim a praise on the earth. In other words, we are required to go out and teach this word who the prophets the truth is given to the prophets so who's supposed to go out and um, 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 not hold their peace these watchmen who are the watchmen they're the prophets and um, with that being said The, um, we, I'm looking for one more verse I wanted to bring out. There it is. So, the truth is given unto the prophets. And if any man have an ear, let him hear. That's Revelation 13 and 9. And what do I always tell you guys? At the end of every class, I tell you um, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 16. But blessed are your eyes. I'm talking to the elect only. I'm only talking to the chosen elect. Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which ye see and have not seen them. And to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. So you are blessed 
if you understand this word. You are truly in a blessing, like I said. Knowing these scriptures is a superpower. How is that possible? It's a superpower. What is he talking about? Well, how, how else are you going to get back into the kingdom without understanding the instructions of how to get there? Only a person that can understand these instructions will be able to get into the kingdom. So it's a superpower to be able to protect your family and let them know in these times of troubles that there is a way out and you have the instruction book and you know how to use it. That's a superpower. Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life, to live, and may enter in through the gates into the city and to Jerusalem and to Yerushalayim. We want to go home. And um, like I said earlier, uh, and um, let's go back to Isaiah 62. I know I, I said I was going to shut it down. Isaiah 62. And um, 6. I have set watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. So what gates are we going back in the city? Oh, Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night, yet make mention of the Lord. Keep not. He, ye, that make mention of Yahweh, keep not silent. Cry aloud, spare not. Raise up thy voice like a trumpet. What chapter and verse? According to King Isaiah. King Isaiah chapter 58, KKV, blue letter. And the funny thing is, there's that trumpet again that I was telling you guys about in the very beginning of the class. When you hear the trumpet, the people tremble. Isaiah 58, starting from the top. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgressions, and the house of Israel, I'm sorry, and the house of Jacob their sins. So, these watchmen that have been set upon the walls of O Jerusalem, that said that they're not going to hold their peace. Until he saves us. Over here in 58, it says, Cry aloud, spare not, rip, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. The only people that are going to be able to accomplish that are the prophets, the elders, the apostles, the teachers, and the, the, the sincere Akiyama Akwa is coming into this 100% truth. And with that being said, if you've got eyes to see and ears to hear, I really hope you were able to get something out of this message. Shalom.